Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well. Now in this video, shall we watch the fantastic Ed Miller band, Beautifully School, The Haunted Wardrobe. Yes, our Jacob Rees-Mogg in Parliament. Over the motion on energy prices bill that happened on late Monday night. Mm. Secretary of State, Ed Miliband. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I will try and be as brief as I can to let as many people speak in this debate as possible. Let me start by saying uh, that Labour called for support for families and businesses in August through an energy price freeze, and so we will support the passage of this bill, and I thank the Secretary of State for the conversations we've had about the bill. Uh, this is an incredibly serious issue for families and businesses across the country. I have to say, before I get into the detail of the legislation, though, Madam Deputy Speaker, what a shambles this government is. We are debating what they describe as their landmark bill for a two-year price guarantee, which was only published last Wednesday, and it's already been shredded by the Chancellor this morning. And last Wednesday, members were in the House at Prime Minister's questions, and the Prime Minister went on and on about her decisive action of a two-year guarantee. She even derided the opposition's approach of a six-month freeze, seeking to spread fear about what would happen in March. And now the government have adopted our proposal. Madam Deputy Speaker, never mind a vision, never mind a plan for the years ahead, this government cannot even give us a plan for the coming week. Truly in office, but not in power. And this matters because families and businesses need to be able to plan. Now I want to talk, Madam Deputy Speaker, about the substantive action in the bill and the way the revenue to pay for it is raised, because I think there are important issues for the House. On the substantive action, there is a contrast with our six-month package. That was a real freeze, not a rise in bills. And £129 for millions of families across the country is significant, and that even takes account of the £400. And I do worry, and we will talk about this in the uh, committee, about the off-grid households. I understand the basis of the Secretary of State's argument. Our package provided £1,000 to help off-grid households. Our costed package, this bill provides just a tenth of the support. And even with the government's measures, it's worth saying this, Madam Deputy Speaker, the University of York estimates that more than 10 million families will be in fuel poverty. So we'll want to debate these issues in the course of the bill's passage. I want to, though, to focus in my remarks on the second set of issues around the way uh, the funding for this bill is provided, because I think this is very important. Our argument five weeks ago, when the government announced uh, its energy price guarantee, was that the government should do everything it could to find some of the money uh, for this intervention from the energy companies who are making enormous profits. Now, anyone who heard the business secretary's dulcet tones on the radio last week will have heard him say there is no windfall tax in this bill. The right honourable member for Wokingham describes it as a surrogate windfall tax, which is a new invention. But I do want to say to the House uh, what page three of the explanatory notes to the bill says. It says the bill aims to do the following require certain generators currently receiving supernormal revenues to make a payment to a third party for purposes of lowering the cost of electricity for consumers or to meet expenditure incurred by the Secretary of State. Madam Deputy Speaker, payments on the basis of windfalls received to lower the cost of electricity for consumers or to meet expenditure incurred by the Secretary of State. It sounds like a windfall tax. It works like a windfall tax. It talks like a windfall tax. It is. A windfall tax. Now, I do want to hear in the course of this debate that the government is definitely going to use the powers to have a windfall tax that are in Clause 16 of the Bill. And this matters, Madam Deputy Speaker, because while we set out a clear plan for a windfall tax, the truth is that having resisted a windfall ta tax tooth and nail, the government has now taken the broadest and most ill-defined powers imaginable. Companies and the public have no idea from this bill about the size of the levy, how much it will raise, and how there will be fairness with the fossil fuel windfall tax announced by the previous Chancellor. Just to remind the House, that was four Chancellors ago uh, in May uh, of this year. Um, now, we will probe two particular issues in the course of this bill, which go to the question of whether we are raising sufficient resources from the windfall tax or surrogate windfall tax in this bill. First, the government will only start the windfall tax on electricity generators, according to the press release, in 2023. Now, these months of delay matter because it will mean billions of extraordinary profits being left. I don't know why the Secretary of State is shaking his head from a sedentary position. I mean, 
it's a very important point, which is that it leaves, it leaves billions of pounds of extraordinary profits with the companies, and it means the British people will be forced to foot more, billions more of the bill for energy price support. If it's the right thing to do to have a windfall tax, why not have it from the date of the intervention in September? I'm very happy to give way to him to explain why he's not doing that. He doesn't... You know, very happy to explain. The, um, right on, John knows perfectly well the energy companies have sold their electricity forward, and therefore the profit is not accruing on the prices they sold it forward at. Well, that would mean that there aren't any windfalls, so why is he having a special payment by, made by them anyway? That makes no sense at all, Madam Deputy Speaker. We will definitely want to probe that in the course of the, in, in the, course of de the debate. How can it possibly be that it's all been sold, it's all been sold forward, that he says? So, they're not, so the, the Secretary of State is saying that the energy companies are making no windfalls at the current time. It does rather beg the question why they're going to have to make special payments if it's all been sold forward and they're making no windfall profits. Second, I want to talk about the level playing field question between what is happening to the fossil fuel companies and the electricity generators. Because the, the previous Chancellor but one introduced a, I think that's right, they introduced a super deduction for fossil fuel companies as part of his windfall tax. That means that for every pound invested in oil and gas and fracking, companies get 91 pence back. But to be clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, this is not something available to renewables, nuclear, or other zero carbon technology. Now, this is an absurd tilting of the playing field towards fossil fuels and against investments in cheap, homegrown clean power, which is absolutely indefensible. Uh, it won't reduce bills. Now, now, we will want to use this bill as best we can, given the constraints of its scope, to debate the merits of this provision, and I urge the House to support attempts to seek to eliminate what is a, a preposterous loophole. Let me, in, in the time I've got left, then go to the wider questions around this bill. Because we are going to continue to be in this position, Madam Deputy Speaker, unless we learn the proper lessons from this crisis. And the proper lessons from this crisis are not some extreme fringe idea that fracking, which will not lower bills, is somehow the answer to the problems we face. The answer is a clean sprint for clean energy. Solar, wind, nuclear as part of it, energy efficiency as, uh, uh, all, all together. And I have to say to the Secretary of State, he, he wrote an article in the Guardian the other day uh, saying, dear, dear Guardian reader, he said, that, uh, he said uh, I can assure Guardian readers I'm not a green energy sceptic. Well, let, let him prove it. He is, he is for fracking, which will not lower bills and is dangerous. Uh, his colleague, the DEFRA Secretary, is seeking to block solar energy worth 34 gigawatts. That's the equivalent of 10 nuclear power stations. It's not some whim of the, of the DEFRA secretary. It is an instruction uh, from the prime minister who says she doesn't like the look of, of solar uh, panels. If he wants to convince people that he understands the stakes, that he understands what is necessary to get out of this crisis, he needs to make a proper sprint for green energy. And the other thing he needs to do, and we will again discuss this in the uh, Bill, and I think we may agree with this, is we need to properly delink uh, electricity and gas prices. And we do need to set a timetable for that, and we suggest that we should set in this bill a two-year uh, timetable uh, for that to happen. L let me end by saying this, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. This bill is necessary because we need support to be put uh, on the statute book. But the truth about this government is that they are lurching from U-turn to U-turn, and it cannot provide the country with the strategic direction it needs to get out of the crisis. The truth is that day by day, they are showing they are out of ideas, out of time, and now in the national interest, they should be out of power too. Yeah. You can tell he's more than a match for the haunted wardrobe, isn't he? I think he knows it as well. <laughs> Especially when we'll go and walk to give away. I just thought it was just brilliant. But I did find what he had to say about the windfall tax rather interesting. Did you? Well, let me know in the comments section below. And um, until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care. <laughs>